Shop Plato's Closet tax-free August 2nd through 4th for back-to-school styles. We sell the trendy, gently used styles you need to make a difference in the world and in your wallet for back-to-school shopping. Save up to 70% off regular retail prices by choosing recycled styles. Save even more when you shop tax-free this weekend. Make a change that others can respect and repeat. Shop Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley this year for your back-to-school looks. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Will Battle is a British tea expert who runs Fine Tea Merchants Limited, an import and wholesale business. He has been tasting teas and creating blends for tea lovers for the past 25 years. He authored the World Tea Encyclopedia, published in 2017, with a second edition in 2020. Andrea Warren, speaking for the nonprofit International Wine and Food Society, founded in London in 1933, writes, quote, it was felt Will was ideally suited to give an introduction to the world of tea. The organization will make the monograph available to its 6,500 members in 130 branches in Europe, North America, Africa, Australia, and Asia. A digital version will be available for purchase from the Society. Visit www.iwfs.org or the TBiz blog for details. One area that I want to chat with you about today is education. I think you're brilliant at that. The encyclopedia was a way for people to get information. But what you've done since in your speaking and multimedia programs, as well as the effort at outreach and explaining to people, is to be praised. And specifically, this little book. Yeah, I'm. for me, it's, it's really important. Because I think, like all of us, whenever we learn a little bit more about a product it just makes you want to learn more because it's sort of a bit of a self-perpetuating thing and i but the more that we can educate a consuming public the better it is for all of us in the tea industry if it's encouraging people to drink better tea and more of it and really it's it's slightly self-centered but also i think there's a joy in education isn't there you know it's it provides a bit of intellectual variation as well being able to try and communicate what's up here to try and sort of communicate that knowledge and enthusiasm, I find I find that quite a, a fun challenge. Those are the two main things. It's also, it's also just it's fun having the opportunity to uh, to talk to people. And one of the things this book's done is given me the opportunity also to go out and. Um, we had a launch at Fortnum and Mason, for example, and actually speak to people, be in front of people and and try and push the message in person. And I really enjoy that side of the job. Talk about the points you want someone to remember, the key aspects of the 100 pages that would stay with people. It's actually quite difficult to condense tea into 100 pages. And I know lots of people who've written, you know, people like Kevin Gascoigne and his his team um, Jane Pettigrew, lots of people who've written about tea will say, you know, 100 pages is definitely not enough to really capture the, the subject area. And I sort of agree with them. But the I think it, it does a good enough job of covering a bit of history of how and why we drink in the rituals that we do. Why do Canadians drink tea like they do? Why, why do Australians and and Dutchmen drink tea like they do. So that was that was important to me because I think it informed a lot about the current sort of consumption footprint. And I wanted to uh, really dive into detail at, or, at origin um, as much as I could, and that forms the meat of the book, and try and also talk in some depth about production methodology. I'm quite a big believer that uh, there's no... Uh, the quality is not defined by the serving methodology or the production methodology or the elevation, anything like that. You know, you can have fantastic CTC just as you can have terrible CTC. Same with orthodox. You can have great loose leaf and you can have terrible loose leaf. So I try to sort of take the tea bag debate out of out of the book. So it was keen to me to try and communicate that quality is not defined by the serving methodology. And also I wanted to talk a bit about how to, how to serve tea, a bit about brew temperatures and brew times. And 
some of the new tea consumption rituals like sparkling tea and lattes and bubble tea and things like that were also it was important to me to get to capture those in the book. And uh, the IWFS, International Wine and Food Society, for them, they're a big membership organization. And for them, it's important to also have uh, locations where one can buy tea that um, are uh, accessible to their membership. So that's, that forms a small part of the book as well. Did they reach out to you or did you pitch them on this idea? The Secretariat's in London. And um, I have an old friend from my Tetley days, Sam Kimmins, who's a tutor at the UK Tea Academy. And uh, Sam is <clears throat> friendly with the Andrea, who runs the Secretariat. And that was the connection. And that I knew they were trying to do a monograph. They do a new monograph every year. And they've done about 25 years worth of uh, these small snapshots mm. into individual subjects. And the last few years, I, I then had a read of them. They did a brilliant one on Madeira, one on uh, blended scotch, another one on Pinot Noir. And I thought they, those were fascinating, really. They're, they're great sort of entry points into a subject. And having read them, I thought I, could, I really want to do the T version of this. And um, so I gave them a synopsis. And um, fortunately, it, it ticked enough boxes t- to be commissioned. Uh, so that, that was the background to it. They're printing copies for their members, and the monograph will be available publicly as well, right? They printed 6,000 of them, I think, in this run. And you, they're also going to be available on Kindle um, from this autumn as well. You covered several aspects of tea health in the monograph. In the tea lands, people accept the goodness of tea, but are only now discovering science-backed, solid evidence of its many functional and condition-specific benefits. I didn't include anything on health and wellness in my encyclopedia, perhaps partly because I've always been a bit cautious about it. Um, you know, we, we, we who have started our careers in big brands are always very cautious about the communication of overt health and wellness uh, related subject matter. Michael Mosley, who sadly died this summer, but he, he does a brilliant, he did a brilliant podcast called Just One Thing. And uh, there was, there's one on green tea and one on black tea. And it contains these wonderful bite-sized, real research-based uh, learnings for how you can change one thing about your life to really evolve health benefits from it. I listened to a couple of those and I thought, yeah, we can communicate about this all day long in, the, in my book. So that, that was one thing. I, it showed me how you can communicate effectively on this, on this matter, perhaps also Another reason why I've tried to put a bit more about it in this uh, monograph is that uh, I'm, I'm actually also getting a bit older. So uh, it's interesting to note you know, where the, the benefits can come. And I think also this, there's a lot more compelling uh, research that's been done over the last five or six years, specifically on things like L-theanine. The reason I mentioned history earlier on in, in this chat is it actually links back to one of the reasons people started drinking tea in the first place in many respects. You know, that ability to stimulate but also calm is, is such a fundamental background to our enjoyment of the product. One of the reasons why I've always been a bit wary about communicating on health is because I, I just think that First and foremost, the reason to drink teas really ought to be that you like drinking it. You enjoy the taste, its ability to refresh and all those wonderful things tea does to you. And that then it is healthy is a great thing. The main reason is not that it's healthy. The main reason it tastes great and it's not doing you any harm, it's doing you some good. Andrea Warren mentioned that one reason tea needed further exploration is that it is increasingly becoming part of the gastronomic scene. The great thing about the International Wine and Food Society is you've got 4,000 ready-made consumers there who are interested in food and drink products. So they've just come off the back of learning everything there is to learn about Madeira. They're probably going to be interested in learning about tea. So the, um, the idea was to try and encourage them to dive into it a little bit more and to regard tea as, you know, just you know, another amazingly um, complex, but also um, yeah, really gastronomic beverage. 
And I think uh, I wanted to help people to sort of navigate that journey. And I'm hoping that what might come of it is people decide they want to go to Sri Lanka and come visit a tea estate or South India or Assam or wherever they decide to go. And, actually, and there's, there's a big readership in the USA and there's a big readership in China. And it'd be great if the Chinese decided they wanted to go and explore some Sri Lankan tea estates. So that was one thing. And the other thing was people who work with tea, specifically people who are working in the out-of-home sector, uh, th that's probably one of our biggest training needs in the industry is training, uh, particularly for us over here in the UK, London five-star hotel staff and um, sort of people serving tea in all sorts of out-of-home outlets. I wanted to try and communicate that tea's every bit as exciting and interesting as coffee, more so. I, I was hoping that the book would serve as a sort of uh, accompaniment to various trainings that happen. Produced by Audavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.